So Jeff Dunn, how's it going with you in the land of heavy metal and hard rock and all that good stuff in the, the world of music? Well, it's, all, it's all good. We've just, um, we just finished the, the festival run. The last one was uh, back in you know, two, two and a half weeks ago or something like that. Um, and now it's uh, recording time. So in the studio, putting down ideas. Um, I've got about... I guess there's eight, eight songs in completion, and there's probably another 10 or 11 in the various stages of pre-production at the minute, so I'm just sifting through everything, um, going through the arrangements and all that kind of stuff, and then once once I'm happy, then we should start recording towards the end of the year, to get everything down. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's all good. And Tony's, um, Tony's just had his hip operation there, so that's been long overdue. Um, you know, the British hospital system have been cancelling it every now and then, now and again, you know, it's been ridiculous. And then there's been work coming in and, you know, the amount of times I've said to them, look, you know, this is important, look what happened to me last year, you know, it's like, so um, he had it done a few days ago and I've been speaking to him, he seems absolutely fine, he's over the moon that it's been done and he's, um, I think the only pain that he's in at the moment is the healing pain from the operation. Because uh, years and years ago, way back in the 80s, I used to work at the, at the hospital and I was in the operating theatres and uh, in orthopaedics and I've seen hip operations and that uh, pretty brutal. So, um, you know, he's, he's got a way to go, but he's doing good. He's doing good at the moment. So he's, he's up and about, he's walking, he's happy. So that's the main thing. It's good. It's like that for the festivals the, this summer. You've been doing very good, you know, and the crowd's been uh, loving Venom Inc. Uh, it, it's been it's been incredible. Every festival that we've been to, um, I've lost track of them all. To be perfectly honest, we've been, we've been doing quite a few. I mean, Hellfest was amazing. Bakken was amazing. Uh, Horosphere, so many that we've done, and the band's been received really well at every single one. I mean, we've had I can't remember which one it was. It might have been Metal Frenzy, but you know, we were on at the same time as Mr. Michael Schenker. Uh, he was on the main stage headlining, and even the stage crew came up to us before the show and said, oh, you know, it's a little bit of a shame that Michael's over there, you know, and you's over here at the same time. But um, we were in, I think it was called the Arena Tent or something like that, and it was packed, okay. absolutely rammed. You know, you couldn't have gotten any more people in. There's people outside right at the back that had video screens up. It was, it was amazing. You know, so every festival... It's been great, and it was the same last year as well. I mean, you know, for me particularly, to get on stage 10 weeks after surgery um, at Bloodstock was incredible. I mean, that was an amazing reception. Alcatraz was an amazing reception. So I think it's it's got to the, fact, the point now where we've done, you know, we've been out there and we've been in the trenches for the last four years, so to speak. You know, we, we played every club on the planet, we've been everywhere, you know, there's, there's very few places that we haven't been, even at the beginning of this year, you know, doing nearly five weeks in South Central America and then in Mexico as well, I mean, that was a tough run as well, so I think next year there's going to be a bigger game plan for us, um, I know we've got to sit down with the agent, we've got to sit down with Nuclear Blast, both uh, who all want to sit down and discuss plans for 2020, everybody's really happy the way things are going. Um, you know, we're not Metallica, we know that. We're not we're not at that status, we're not at that level, but you know, we're, we're slowly getting up there. Um we're sort of well at least we're not going down, let's put it that way. Yeah. You know, that, that's that's the good thing about it, you know. We we worked bloody hard for this. And I mean all this work preceded the, the Venom Inc. thing. I mean the, you know, the work that we did with Empire. You know, we, we, we were out there constantly with Empire as well. So, you know, myself and Tony, we've been, we've been at it for, oh, God. Well, since 2012, that was the first major tour with uh, Empire of Evil. You know, we went straight into America for 22 shows with no days off. And, you know, that was a big test for us. We thought, you know, at our age, are we going to be able to do this in the back of the van? And we did it. And um, there was no stopping us after that. It's been hard, it's been tough, you know, because we don't travel in five-star luxury, you know. 
it, you know, when you get to a certain level, touring, although you miss your friends and family and stuff like that, touring can become very easy for you. Right. You know, and I'm lucky to have been in that position. I've been in that position as a session guitarist. I've been in that position with Venom in the early days. Um, and I've seen what it's like at both ends of the scale. You know, and, you know, we've literally been in the trenches and we've fought our way up here. So um, I'm proud of what we've achieved so far. You know, so let's see what next year brings. You know, new album, more tours. So let's see what goes. Are you going to try to bring some uh, old classic um Jeff riffs in this, and uh, you know the new album. Ah, uh, always. I mean, you know, I mean, when I was when I wrote out there, um, I was constantly questioning myself. Um, you know, and I remember having a, a conversation with Tony one night. We were skyped, and I had written for Arve. I had written in excess of twenty-five songs, and a lot of those were in various stages of completion. But, you know, I was just writing and writing and writing. And then I stopped. I was constantly in the studio just, just going over stuff. Um, and I remember saying to Tony, you know, is this, is this right? You know, you know, looking at it from, from Tony's point of view, as, you know, me as the founder of the band, as the founder of Venom, I was probably too close to everything and questioning myself, is this Venom? Am I writing Venom material again? because I hadn't wrote Venom material for so long. Um, but I think what had helped was the fact that we had been out on the road constantly and we were playing the old classics every night. You know, we were playing Blood Lust, Live Like an Angel, Well in the Hell, Die Hard, all, all the stuff that people wanted to hear. So getting back into that mindset and then, you know, then listening back to the stuff that I, I wrote, I was like, oh yeah, there's hints of the old stuff there. And there will be on this album, on, on, on the new album as well. Because um, that's what I'm about. I'm, I'm blues based and I'm more of a classic rock metal guitarist than, than, than one of these new guys, you know. Yeah. And I'm proud of that. So that's the way it's going to be. Simple as that. And that's good, uh, a good way to say it too. Because they, and you got to be proud of it. And um, I'm proud of you yeah. for doing it. I mean, your, your riffs in the past always... Um, Always stand the test of time, you know. And ain't nothing wrong with <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with live like an angel, die like a devil, you know. You got some classic good old rock and roll in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. When was the last time you ever played at War with Satan, the complete song? It was never ever played live. Never. Never played. Never played live and uh I can't even remember the last time I listened to that album. Yeah. I've, I've been on record many times, and so I've said like I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that album. You know, it's not, it's not one of my favorite things that we ever did. No, nor is possessed. But that's just a personal point of view. Again, probably being too close to it. Um, but I, I don't know. This is, I think I'm always saying it's a good album, but I don't think it's a great album. I don't think it's like anything like Black Metal was or what the hell. You know, yeah. people have always said to me about chronological order of my favourite albums, and it would be Welcome to Hell, Black Metal, Primeval, Resurrection, and now Harvey. You know, and those five albums, you know, I think I think probably those are the albums that I'm most proud of. You know, all the rest of the stuff, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna diss it, I'm not gonna turn on to oh, it was a mistake doing that or that. But, you know, I know people, I've spoken to fans who say that at War with Satan's the favourite Venom album ever. And hey, that's cool, you know, because the music affects different people in different ways. Yeah. I've met people who said Possessed is their favourite album. For me, Possessed was the most stressful thing that I ever did, you know, because that was at the point where the band was falling apart and I was, I thought, this is it, I'm out of here, you know. I even spoke to Albert on at one point during the recording where he came over to me and says, you know, is everything okay? And I went, absolutely not. You know, given this six months and then I'm over here. And in reality, I stayed longer. Um, but, you know, I've got, I've got no good memories of that album at all. Enjoy. You know, not, nothing. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything to me. Um, and then again, on one of the American tours that we did, I think it was in Seattle, we came out of the backstage area and there was a guy standing there. 
and he, he approached us and he says, I've only got one album, you know, I'm not going to bother you guys and like, hey, that's cool, you know. He said, I just want you to sign my favourite Venom album and it's his favourite Venom album of all time was The Wastelands. He was a huge Venom fan, he had followed us from the beginning, but his favourite album was The Wastelands. Wow. And it just, I think it just shows that, you know, this band across the board has got a pretty good catalogue of songs, you know. Everybody's got a different favourite, you know. I mean, but at the same point, you know, I mean, every time we've been doing these festivals, and, you know, as far flung as, you know, playing in Beijing and Taiwan, when you're playing Canvas Battery and you've got a Chinese audience singing the chorus back at you, that's pretty special. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty incredible. You know, so, you know, any band who's out there who, who has that, you know, I've, I've seen so many things in Metallica where, they, you know, they've all been singing along. And that, that is an amazing feeling for a band. And it is for us. It's great. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Just let you know, I'm, I did myself a cover of that War with Satan, tuned in deep, like you guys did back in the day, the full version. Uh-huh. It took me one week to sing the words, and it took me probably five to six days to learn all the guitar parts. Oh, God. <laughs> You've got too much time on your hands. <laughs> no, no, I, I did it as a hobby. It's a, one of my favorite songs, actually. Um, there's, yeah. there's certain parts in there that opens up the whole world. Right, um, mm-hmm. at your 14 minute mark or something like that, you know, it's good. <laughs> I have to show you that link when it gets released. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so your summer is very good, I, I imagine. And you know, the people are greeting you like greeting you guys like, um, as you always were, like legends in rock. It's it constantly amazes me, you know, when you know, when I meet people, when we do meet and greets, um, you know, you, you get people who, you know, they stand in front of you and they can't even speak. You know, I've had grown men crying in front of me. It's, it's incredible, you know, and I've always said, I was just a kid from Newcastle who wrote some songs and people did them. Yeah. I was lucky. I was absolutely lucky. Right place, right time. It was as simple as that. I don't think there was any great talent or any great master plan whatsoever. The stars aligned and it just happened to be better. That was it. Um, but, you know, getting greeted like that and getting appreciated like that and spoken of as, you know, like a legend and a, an innovator and all, all this kind of stuff. I can say the same thing about my heroes. You know, so I, I turn into a gibbering wreck when I when I you know when I'm in touch with anybody that I consider to be a hero. For the first time ever, when we toured two years ago, we were in. Um, no, sorry, it was just it was last year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was last year because it was when I came back when I had the heart attack. Um, in Australia, we then hopped over to New Zealand, and there's a journalist that I come to know pretty well in New Zealand. And he's in touch constantly with one of my, well, my biggest hero. And um, after the show, he says, okay, we're going back to the hotel and you've got a phone call. And I've never spoken to this guy before. I've seen him in concert for the first time in 1979. And uh, that was KK Downing, Judas Priest. Wow. And, you know, he picked up the phone and he spoke to KK and then he passed the phone to me. And that was it. I was the same. I was like, fuck, <laughs> what do I say? You know? Well, okay, get down. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've spotted it. I've seen it straight away. Yeah, huh. well, fucking, there you go. I don't know if you see that. Yeah, I see that. Nice. <laughs> nice. Um, and I mean, I remember saying to KK, I says, right, first things first, mate, I'm going to get all the fanboy shit straight out of the way, you know? So, yeah, we're going to have a decent conversation. Yeah. And I just told him. You know, it, it, and it was hearing, you know, what a lot of young bands who have been out supporting Venom Inc. have come up to me and said, you know, oh, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be a guitar, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be in a band, you know, you started with this for me, blah, 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 blah. 
It was exactly the same when I was in KK Dama. Yeah, I was into music, I was into metal, you know, but that night, and I had just bought a guitar, and, but that night in 1979 at Newcastle City Hall, and I was, you know, I was sort of jamming with a few friends and things, I was nothing serious, but that just cemented everything for me. You know, I've seen him on stage with Ray Wall, right? Ah, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. And I mean, I've got no, I've got no hang-ups or anything about saying that, you know, KK for me, all those years ago, I mean, he was like a distant mentor, if you like. Mm -hmm. I've never spoke to the guy. I've never met him or anything like that. But I mean, come on, you've just got to look at some early shots of me in Venom, you know? It's like, you can see where the look came from. And, you know, I mean, after I seen that show at Newcastle City Hall, and I went to the music also. store and I, I said, I want a cherry red flying V. Yeah. You know, or ordered the flying V and that was it, you know. And your hair was so blonde also. It's, yeah. So it's all KK's fault at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, all, all is black metal. All black metal, church burnings, murders, everything. It's KK Downing's fault. KK Downing, incredible. <laughs> yeah. I was going to tell him that next time I speak on. <laughs> He'll have a good laugh at that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was in touch with him just before he, he did his bloodstock appearance. Okay. And then I was talking I was talking to him afterwards. We sort of text each other. Um, uh, it was just great. To, I wish I could have made it over there, but I, I couldn't. I was in the studio. I was recording. But um, I've seen all the footage and everything. And I mean, just great to see him back yeah. on stage again. Yes, it it's really beautiful good. to see him on stage. Yeah. Well, Jeff, man, I really appreciate you taking the time. It's always great to talk to a legend. Oh, <laughs> <give> me. <laughs> I'll say it. I have no problem saying that. I mean, you're you're great. Um, no, just keep up the good work, and I look forward to a brand new uh, Venom Inc. album. Yeah, yeah. It should. I mean, I think we're aiming probably a spring release. So I think. Um. So I mean, there's there's no rush. Nuclear Blast have said to us, you know, whenever you you guys are ready, then we'll look at it and stuff like that. So. I think next week we've got um, a conference call with the other last just to discuss what's going to go on um, and how we're going to approach it. Um, but yeah, we're just going to take our time and get a good album out of it. Mm. We've got a few months to kick back, so time to get in there. Yeah. Well, you have a lovely night and uh, we'll talk to yeah. you again. Yeah. You too, man. Thank you. Cheers now. Bye-bye.